G'day and welcome back to the channel. I am Commander Tyriel, and today I'm grinding out the newest addition to the US Blue Water Fleet, the USS Gearing, a very capable destroyer sitting at battle rating 4.7. While at first glance it may seem like just another Sumner class, the Gearing was an attempt to increase the effectiveness of the previous class, namely its operating range, with the changes made being large enough to justify the new type classification. In game, it has some distinct advantages and disadvantages over its predecessor which need to be recognised in order to do well. Although both ships share an identical armour layout, she was extended 14 feet or 4.3 metres amidships, with the internals rearranged and extra fuel storage added. As a result, she sits roughly 5 feet lower in the water, placing the magazines lower under the waterline and also protecting a small gap in the anti-frag armour that the Sumner class has. The main drawback to this is the gearing class is unable to fire both four main guns at close range targets due to obstruction. As a result, captains always have to take an angled approach to maximise their firepower. With the ship being slightly longer, it's also able to bring its stern turret on target marginally sooner. The ship possesses an air search and track radar, which the Sumner does not have. With the gearing being marginally faster despite the extra fuel load, but as a result it is more prone to fires. The pumps are also located lower in the hull and are protected by fuel stores. So keeping those strengths and weaknesses in mind, we've come to Tokyo Bay to see what we can do. Now Tokyo Bay is a very much a knife fighting map. A lot of the destroyers just either camp the points here and shoot at each other, or they make wild dashes out into the open. I like to try and thin the herd a little bit here and take advantage of people that aren't watching. So we'll put some fire onto this, presumably a Moffat. Keeping in mind that my stern turret is also useful, but it has a wider dispersion. So it's not always as accurate. There we go. Ammunition rack, delicious. Yes, I know the Moffat has four excellent guns, but you don't need that many in these fights. Four five inch American guns can do everything you need them to do. So we're going to slowly creep back out here and see if we can get someone else that's distracted. And my aim here is to try and make a small dash around the point to get in towards the B point. Another porter, let's have a go. A rear, <laughs> oh dear, rear ammo rack gone, let's go again. Another Moffat. I always start amidships and work my way. There we go. Another three ammo racks in as many minutes. Alright, so we've got a Japanese destroyer hiding here behind the islands. And this is where it gets tricky. Because if they get close enough to that, you can't get any good shots on them. And the hardcover just protects them well. So I've taken some decent hits here. I'm going to try and turn back in. So you'll see that uh, one of those four guns just went rogue then. Alright, so I've lost all the guns on the front. Hit the repairs. May not make this dash. But I'll bring the rear gun onto this Japanese to try and get some final hits in. I should make it until I get hit by my friend here. Thank you for that. Thank you very much. Destroyed by a ram attack. <laughs> Oh dear. Alrighty. This is why we bring backups when we're grinding. And so already we've lost some of our teammates and it looks like the rest of them are probably going to go the same way because we have a few destroyers just camping that point there but under the hardcover. So I'm going to take my way the opposite direction and see if we can't thin anyone out that's trying to make a dash for B. Learn from your mistakes. Don't just charge headlong back into death. That's my motto. <laughs> okay, so pre-targeting, aiming in front because he looks like he's going faster. Pre-firing. Starting amidships and working our way backwards towards that ammo rack that by now has become a bit of a meme for the Moffat. There we go. Go. 
There's no obvious targets yet, so we'll creep in towards the B point. Got a couple of destroyers out in the cruiser spawn, so we'll take some shots at them. Got a closer range target, so we'll always prioritize that. There's that front gun going rogue again. Getting the angles right. Poor Papa Jonathan. Sorry about that, buddy. Let's try and dig out these destroyers here. I don't like campers. Got another Muffet. <laughs> another ammo rack. That's not my record, by the way. I have had quite a few more than that in less time. Recently, a lot of the Moffat players are just AFKers. But if you want to do that, that's fine. I'll take advantage of it. So we're just observing the situation. We're not going to let everyone know that we're here. Looks like we've got a Z25 or something similar, maybe a Z32. Get solid hits on him. They also have a rear ammo rack weakness. But he looked like he already had low crew, so that was fairly simple. Okay, so we're caught at a disadvantage here. I'm going to turn towards him and try and get some front gun fire onto him. Let's see if we can get that ammo rack quickly. He's not focused on us. It's probably a bot ship again. Again, we've got another one. Okay, the most destructive ship here is that Sumner. So I'm going to turn away from him. I'm not going to fight him directly. I'm just going to use my stern guns. Because he's no doubt going to open fire on us. And here comes the reply shots. Drop some smoke. And while we've still got range on him, we will fire a few shots through the smoke. My goal here is to try and preserve my life as long as possible. Um, the rest of my team look like they have collapsed around the B point. Everyone else is out the cruiser spawns, so it's up to me to keep this area clear. Got another Moffat making a break for it. Starting fire amidships as before. Work our way backwards. Got that guy too. So I think the lesson here is clear. Do not expose your rear ammunition racks if you are in a destroyer that has them. Because I will shoot you there. Okay, so, looks like the majority of the destroyer threat is gone. No doubt that guy is still hiding behind the point. You can see some fire going back and forth over there. So we'll go for a seven kilometer shot. One singular shot. I'll teach you something called spotting fire. See where the shell splash lands. Move the scope to where the shell splash landed and fire. Wait for them to hit. They're a little long, but you see the gist. So we do it again, fire one shot. This lets us be able to still be aware of the situation around us and not have to commit to one target. Got two destroyers out here about to have a destruction derby by the look of it. Oh dear, Omaha class ambush. Turning away from that, we'll drop some fish. He seems to be reversing towards the island, so it doesn't look like we're going to have luck with those. And he has accurate fire on us, so we need to turn away. We've lost an engine. So we're about to drop off in speed. Try and get some shots back on him to at least show we're not toothless. Turning back in to try and throw off his rangefinders. Check for any threats besides that guy. Nothing seems to be apparent, so we'll continue on our way. 
Another solid hit, just below the bridge. Got a Fletcher out here. We'll try and get some shots on this guy while he's exposed. I don't have enough guns to fight an Omaha in a one-to-one. -one. And oh, poor Fletcher. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like ammo seeking rounds sometimes alright so we're in a bit of a, a hard position now because no doubt there's going to be cover waiting for people to go around this point everyone that's gone for the A point or the B points died so be super aware of where he is and we'll try and be the first ones to fire we've got an aircraft inbound so we'll set our gunners to manually assign them to the target so we don't have to worry about it. It's very helpful having that air search radar. It looks like we've got two aircraft inbound. Maybe an attacker and a bomber. Oh, that's very bad timing. So the Omaha's still got good shots on us and we're about to get pinged by a US destroyer hiding behind the shelf there. Not good. Not good. All right, that means we need an airstrike inbound to dig out that Omaha. All right, so we can see him. We're gonna line up for a low, low attack. The P-51 is an excellent naval CAS bomber. I love it. It has a very high sea level top speed and it, it can sustain that speed, which is exactly what you need for this sort of attacker. <laughs> smart asses. Try again. Well, I shall, sir. I shall try. But first, I'm going to get your cruiser friend hiding behind this island. So as you can see, we're, we can hit 600 on the flat with a load of two, two 1,000 pounders. I've had great success with this aircraft over the last couple of years. So we'll slowly turn back in. I'm going to pop up and drop these. And they will wreck him. Hopefully he won't be on the ball and we'll be do fine. Oh, damn it. I <laughs> still got him. Which is always the fate when you let a fighter to get that close with a heavy armament. But that's what happens when you sit still. Now I could take another Sumner, but I'm going to take my anti-missile ship, uh, anti-airship, because there were air targets around before, and hopefully they're still alive. Looks like we've got one in the air. I'll load the tubes and fire the missile. These things are brutal. 50 kilos of explosives. You just need to point and shoot. Delicious. <laughs> this is Papa John again. Sorry, mate. <laughs> Alrighty. So we're going to try and sneak up on our friend that's hiding behind the island. He did challenge us to try and get him, so we will. But we'll do it a little bit unorthodox. Because I think it's early enough in the game's meta for anti-ship missiles for this guy not to expect it. Nothing says F you like a missile to the face. Now they're not entirely great against the American ships because of their anti-frag armor, but it does it does scare the hell out of them, so it'd be fun. Plus, if I manage to sit on the cap point, I'll be able to constantly reload the missiles, which is broken. I think it's like 12 seconds reload on them. But you'll see that in a moment. Assuming he doesn't see us first. So we'll sneak in here close to the Everhard or whatever it's called. <laughs> <laughs> Run 
Alrighty. Full reverse. Hit the brakes. He's distracted. So we'll launch a missile. Probably fired that a bit early. I should have waited to cap the point first, but... He's already spawning to my cap, so bang. Take that to your turret, sir. And there's my hello shot while I change to AP. I should have done that before as well. So we'll back it right up as we cap. It's another little trick you can use. If you, if you point your bow straight at the ship and then hit full reverse, it, it doesn't appear like you're moving away from them at first. So that can save your life a lot of time. Off with another missile. Uh, looks like we had a ghost missile. Went straight through him. Nice. Try again. Ah, oh, There's no gap there. There is certainly no gap there. Aim lower in the hull instead. There we go. Bang. So we got through. We took out his front turret. Now he's going to try and swing his stern around you. What? It's predictable. Hit that as well. He's got one good gun. Get those missiles. See how quickly they reload? It's great. You can do this against cruisers too um, on the encounter maps. And I have a video coming out soon about that. Keep tuned for that. So I'm not killing this guy as quickly as I would have hoped. But I'm certainly <laughs> let him know I'm there. Shots aren't that great. But he's going to get me in a second any any second now, I reckon. So I'll throw one more missile over the top. 4% crew. Done. But I've captured a point. And so now I've broken that stalemate. I'm out of ships too. <laughs> and that was kind of fun. So I'm going to say it. Oh, now I've only got the the chance card. What will we get? Ooh, we got ourselves a Helldiver. Nice. What's its armament? We have a torpedo. Torpedo? Please be a late war torpedo. The early war torpedoes have terrible stats, but judging by the nose of that one, it's a Mark 13-1 case torpedo. Yep, which means it has excellent drop characteristics. You can do nearly 800 kilometers an hour and drop this thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and lob this torpedo over the point and see if we can't dig out Mr. Sniper over there. So we'll try and draw his AA fire and we roll away from the fire and under it so we don't prox those... HEVT rounds that he's no doubt using. So he's reacquired a different target now. We're trying to make him think like we're not going for him, and we'll turn in. Speed is not really a factor here until we try and tr throw it over the point. So we're going to need to drop our speed because he's very close. Line it up straight get him nice and low so that he can't get us with his AA fire pull up gently, release booyah <laughs> excellent excellent <laughs> uh, that's going to make a short stay tuned alrighty now unfortunately we've taken heavy damage and I'm trying to reply to this guy. <laughs> yes, it took me four tries to kill you, sir, but what happened? I killed you. And I just got <laughs> the monster score. Absolutely monstrous. Just make sure 21,000. <laughs> 21,000, holy moly. 12 ship kills, one aircraft kill, 5,000 battle points. <laughs> GG to you too, mate. 
I love a good sport, thank you. So we're back with the final score. As we saw before, 21,000 damage. If that doesn't deserve a like, I don't know what does. <laughs> Happy Sunday, guys.